you're listening to the Board Game Snobs podcast, a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> And go. This is going to be a quickie. This is going to be a quick one. This is going to be a quick episode. Because we have things to do. A brief episode of Board Game Stomp Pocket. Quick, brief, fast, speedy. This is Jerry. This is Gummy. We're back from BGG Spring. Yet again. Which was still. a quicker trip for you. Well, I enjoyed it a lot. And we haven't, we've, we've, we've got, we always get a lot of content out of BGG. And what we typically do is we talk about several episodes of it for like a month, it seems like, typically, don't we? We milk it. We milk it for all that it's worth. And unfortunately, we can't really give away the meat of it, which would be the Den of Wolves mega game and several other things like John Company, because Bubba's not here for John's company and Enrique's not here for the mega game. And I refuse to talk about the mega game without Enrique. Uh, I have a story from Den of Wolves. It's one of those things where... After I got home and thought about it, in retrospect, it played like a movie in my head. Uh-huh. And I thought about it, and it, almost, it touched my heart. Tell me about how your heart was touched. Well, I can't tell you until we get Enrique on the episode. Oh, oh, you can't. Oh, okay. It's part of the Den of Wolves discussion. So you can't even begin to give a little bit of it? Uh, no, I'm not going to, because it's not apropos to what we're about to discuss, which is White Castle. The White Castle. Not a... Not one of the White Castle so, by Devere Games. Uh, that was, that was, okay. So we played that game with Joffrey. And he did a good job explaining the game. Mm, I think he, he, he told me later he got a couple of rules wrong. Oh, but the overall of it. Yeah. Like overall, well, the flavor of, the, of it, we, we kind of understood. But, but you can't really fault him because as somebody who teaches the games... I can kind of point out there is a lot of problems with the icons in this game. It's like, terrible. Like it's the, I don't like the icons. This game is rated an eight with they a weight of a three. They love it. They love this game. And Devere has a good reputation, which it should. They produce a lot of fine games. This is not one of them. I don't know. I, oh, man, I don't know. This is, <laughs> there is a lot of people loving this game. I don't know why people like this game so much. You, you, you give give your thoughts on it real fast, because we're speedy. So to begin the game, this is the game I was thinking of, where you get your cards and you draft them, and that's your starting cards. Yeah, you start off with like a little card. Yeah, and then you pick a die on this bridge. You have several bridges to choose from, and depending on where you pick that die from, it's a certain color of die. Depending on that color of die, you can add it to an action space, trigger that action. I, so, uh, I'm not even... It's gonna, a dice placement? Y- yes, but it's... A, it's action a, selection? It's, it's a pseudo dice placement thing, where you roll dice, you put all the middle dice on the bridge, and then on the one side of the bridge or the other is the lowest or highest dice. And so when you select that dice and put it out, you're either paying the amount difference or gaining the amount difference between what little dice is indicated on the action spot. So if it's a four, you place a six, you're going to get two bucks. If it's a four and you place a two, you're going to pay two bucks. That's really the only mechanism. It's figuring out where you're going to place, and you know how I feel about dice placement, place this dice out onto this board, which I'm not 100% sure what was going on. Well, it has this theme, as I'm reading it on BGG, of this castle and all the things that surround the castle, the garden, the pond, and the the social status inside the castle. You feel none of that. It's all pointless. It means nothing. This game, within, again, uh, two rounds of this, I was like, I don't like this game. It did nothing for me. I'm picking uh, picking up a die. I'm placing it down. Depending on if it matches or not, I either a, a o pay 
get or don't pay anything if it matches and you can stack on top of other die Marco Polo style on a couple of different spots. There's one spot where you can go infinitely You know, everybody can, the whole gang can go there if they want to. It just did nothing for me. This game is just action, action selection, trying to gain some victory points. And the iconography is horrendous because you have the victory points, which is a fan. Then there's like the, the per- clam with the pearl in it, mm-hmm. which looks very similar to the fan. Uh, then you have farmers and samurai and it's all just the stuff that means nothing to me. And uh, this is a game that when I feel nothing, I'm three or four rounds into it. I feel nothing. It doesn't make me feel any type of way. I'm not feeling joy from playing it. I'm not feeling satisfaction from understanding the game because we were done with it. And we're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Why is that? What am I doing? Why are the actions I'm taking have to do with the theme of the game? And it's so pasted on. Not that I'm a thematic person, not that I require a theme. I enjoy it. It kind of helps you go with the flow. If you can find the flow of the game. Oh, this means this, this means that this, why this relates to that. And then almost at the end of the game, we realized we were playing something completely wrong because the iconography was so terrible. Me and Jerry both did not like this game. Joffrey wants to like it. He kind of likes it. He he kept saying he enjoyed the cascading effects. Mm-hmm. And he kept triggering things that would, this triggers that, this, that. So he enjoyed that aspect of it. The next day when we were playing Shadows Over Camelot, he told me, I got a couple of, th- we, there was a couple of things we got pretty wrong. I still don't think it's going to affect y'all's opinion on the game, but you just might want to give it another chance. I would give this game another chance. I didn't. It's one of those games I didn't absolutely hate. Right. I just felt nothing. Yeah, I, I would definitely give it another chance because it, it's one that I would like to know, you know, yes, yes, I would definitely give this game another chance because like I said, even if I played one rule wrong, but also just going through something again and again and really trying to figure out and distill down why exactly you don't like it or you like it. That's, that's kind of the thing is, is it's very easy to pick up on something and go, well, this one little thing I'm not too sure about. And I like what these designers, uh, Isra C and Shay S. I think they're the same ones that did red cathedral. They have this thing of using dice, uh, and these small cards, we're all both present in uh, Red Cathedral as well. I much preferred the rondelle of Red Cathedral as to this pick a dice on this pointless bridge they had that just actually kind of got in the way of the icons I needed to see mm-hmm. and pick that dice up and place it down. It just, it Red Cathedral far superior to this game, in my opinion, upon first play. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I do like, I do like, uh, yeah, I really do like Red Cathedral. But yeah, so it didn't blow us away. Let's just say that. Which apparently we are in the minority. Everyone apparently loves this game, raves about this game. Who knows? Who knows? The people like what they like. That's true. And I don't. And they don't like what they don't like. I know, but it's weird how that is. But I don't know why people like certain things, though. Like, I honestly don't understand the little nuances of some of these games that it comes across where I feel like there is a. A large, um, a large uh, group of maybe I want to say it's newer folks coming into the hobby that just like whatever the hotness is. Yeah. It could be that, but also I think mob mentality type thing. No, not necessarily that. Just new people that just don't that they haven't played a whole awful lot and they play something, or maybe it is that people. Maybe that is that when you want to say mob mentality, I'm going to say maybe it's more of. People just want to like something. They want to play something. I think we are incentivized when you play a game to like it because you've wasted your time on it otherwise, which I don't feel like I've wasted my time on anything. Even if I play a bad game, I'm like, well, you know, at least I understand now this aspect of it in terms of design or something else. I could see this being one of those games. If I it's, I played it again, maybe it's a Dimocker situation where the first time I played it, although Dimocker, I enjoyed it the first time, mm-hmm. but I just didn't, I, I knew I wasn't grasping it fully. This game, I really did not grasp at any point during the game until the end where I still did not grasp it. Maybe if I played it again, I could appreciate, you can appreciate the theme of it seems to be very peaceful. Mm-hmm. 
and I know and I enjoy myself some games that you play literally to relax. I'm playing this game. It's very relaxing. It's very peaceful. You're gardening. You have a pond. You have fish. You're in this nice Japanese village. Okay, I get that. But the mechanisms weren't enough to make me want to come back to it. Was it was pick up a dice, put that dice somewhere, and then do whatever little track, basically. It wasn't really, there was a track, but it was disguised as something different. That's that's the mechanism of the game. And so your only real decision in this game was which dice are you going to select and where you're going to put it, which is not a bad main mechanism. It's just that what you have to do and what you need to offer to people is the the strategy behind that. I think the point is, is that when, like, when I play another when I think of a placement game and I'll put dice placement, work replacement and action selection, they're all kind of in that same thing where I'm, I'm putting something to do in action. I think of like Lorenzo El Magnifico, which is putting out one of your family members in this tower and there's rules to it. Like you have to have this thing that you're trying to get and you have to be able to pay for it and you can't put the same workers in the same spot and you're building an engine. I never got the engine building part of that, although of this game, although there is one because you're flipping those cards over on your mm. player board. And when you do this one action, you get all this other stuff like it cascades, as Joffrey says. But it was so abstract. I guess I didn't I didn't ever I couldn't ever connect anything together like nothing in my brain told me if I take this dice, I put that there. I'm going to put it here. And then when I do this thing, I'm going to get all of this. I didn't make that connection. It may very well be there. But it wasn't coming through as it was like, for instance, like Lorenzo, put a worker, take something, put it on your board. And now when you decide, all right, I'm going to run my engine, you run your lands and you get all this benefit. I guess that's what I'm saying is that it, it's a smaller game. It's a smaller box game. But I was just not enthralled with it initially either because the main mechanism of it just wasn't to me that that enthralling. So, I mean, it's, it is what it is. I'd love to play it again. I very much want to play. I did get to play Sand, which is the game I really wanted to play of theirs. That's a Devere game. You did not get to play? Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. So I still need to play it. And uh, yeah, I, I just, I'd, I'd want to play White Castle again so I have a better handle on what it is and understand what the charm of it is that people are so enraptured with. I would concur. I didn't get it. I mean, theme is not something I yearn for in games, but it is nice when you have a theme that kind of tells you the steps you need to take. I have to, I have to have a theme. I used to say all the time that, you know, just the mechanism is moving around. If the theme doesn't, if it doesn't kind of get me in that mindset of what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do, then it's harder for, I think it's harder to connect with the actual mechanisms. And the iconology of it is just crazy if it doesn't make any sense. I need to play White Cathedral again. Or not White Cathedral. Red Cathedral. Everything's at White Castle, Red Cathedral. Oh, I see what they did there. Oh. That's why I... Uh, brown Sands. Uh, brown Sands. But that's not the same people. Oh, it's not? It's not Ezra C and I don't think, I don't think it is. I think it's the same people did Silk. But Red Cathedral is another one I need to play. Is it solo? It, yeah, it has a solo. Have you played it solo? Of course it's, not. It's easily beatable. Yes. I've oh. played it solo and have never lost to the solo. Oh, Ivan. Yeah. It's even because it depends on the way the cards lay out in the solo game of Red Cathedral. You can lay them out where the machine has a really easy go of things or they have a difficult go of things. I've played them because you lay them out randomly. I played it several times solo. I've never lost to Ivan. Oh. Which tells you it's really easy because I'm not that great at solo. You might but be cheating too. I was not cheating. It's a it's a super easy game. It's it's, you, it's you good may because be cheating but not know it. It's super. Well, I was sure if I didn't know it, I wouldn't know it. So you're cheating anyway. <laughs> but, 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 but don't know that I'm cheating. But, you, out. But, but no. But if you cheat and don't know it, are you cheat? Oh well, yeah, yeah. Even if you don't know it, yeah, you're cheating if you don't know it. So you could be cheating. I could be. You could be. Who knows? You would not me because you don't pay attention. I do pay attention. So you are cheating. I read the rules religiously when I'm playing solo. You're cheating. But anyway, Ivan's very easy to beat. You're cheating, Ivan. 
Don't be smart, Ivan. I bet we get You've some. You've beaten me many there's times. Some, there's some people people emailing if he dies, he dies. I can't believe I lose to you oh. repeatedly. <laughs> this is I can't help it, Ivan. I'm just doing it. You are very good at this game for some reason. This I is, do not know. This is, a, this is how every Russian sounds to America. Because that's, 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 that's what they, they that's say it. to us. V- vodka. Yes, that. that. Now, there is no vodka cards in this game, guys, Red Cathedral, which it really holds, needs. Holds it back. That would get them Which we discovered really going. the first vodka we actually like, thanks to Bruno. We need to post that picture of all of us smiling because that's the first time we've actually <laughs> found a vodka. I made a, I went on a rant at some point that there's no point. Vodka just makes other things alcoholic. I've never had a good vodka, and Bruno proved me I believe wrong. I posted, I don't remember where I posted at some point in time. I said, I, I, vodka has, I've never tasted a vodka I like. Vodka, most generally, m- for most people, they're like, Oh, I can't taste it. It's very smooth. It's a really good vodka. Yeah. No, I want something with flavor. Like you talk about gin. Gin really has a flavor. Right. It's very specific. It's overwhelming. Vodka, for the most part, it's either tastes like rubbing alcohol or it tastes like water. Yep. And water is preferable to rubbing alcohol. But this iceberg that Bruno brought, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's Canadian. Canadian from the heart of a glacier from real geese. What if they're mining that glacier? Now you love miners. They're out there picking away. It's just a big straw that they got. All it is is some <laughs> big mounty guy. He's got a straw in that iceberg and he's just sucking it up and just spitting it, spitting it in the, spitting the water into the bottle. All right, no, get That's that, gross. get that distilled. <laughs> and it's made from it's, distilled glacier water. It's from, no, no, it's not it, distilled because they don't have to. They distill don't have to it. distill it. It's from fermer- it's fermented cream corn. Mm, that makes it sweet. Mm-hmm. So they're over there opening cans. And the other guy's spitting water out of the iceberg and making some iceberg vodka. So we went to Total Wine and More with Bruno, which was exciting. And they He'd had never a, been to Total Wine and More, which is the did Wal- not know it's a Walmart sized liquor store. It is a massive liquor store here. In that fights out back states. If you were a wife beater there, you get to go out back and fight other people. And he was blown away that there's this amount of alcohol available in this yes, store. Yes. Yes. And we did a sampling. Well, I didn't, but Jerry and Bruno did. No, a, Bruno didn't either. Bruno can't no, give yeah. me his sample cup. I got, I got thrice the samples. So they tried Kruto, a Ukrainian vodka. Vodka. That's how they say it. Vodka. I don't pronounce the V. Nuclear vessels. Come on. I don't think that. Uh, c- continue. Hey, I, no, that's a thing. They do not pronounce the V's. Or Ky- W's. Kiev? Dirk Nowitzki. It's Nowitzki. I'll, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Anyway. So there was a salesman there, and I don't know if he was pretending to be Ukrainian or not, but he had an accent selling this Ukrainian vodka Kruto that was distilled nine times, and he was bragging about how they distilled it and how many times they distilled it, and that's why it was so pure. And Bruno literally took one sip and then, like, handed it to jerry without the guy saying because he's like no this just made my stomach sick because bruno's like i'm used to glacier water that requires no distilling it's the purest form of water on earth and this guy's bragging about how many how they distill their water from chernobyl and, from chernobyl and bruno's like no it's we don't green. need to distill <laughs> <laughs> they got stuff like that you could get a job there doing that. Just whatever, since you could do the voice, whatever you're selling, just act like you're from. This is the vodka from <laughs> from Priapet. I mean, I do, might do a stereotypical yes, accent of just, whatever. Just show from. up. Just show up with your track sheet suit and wearing your AK-47. <laughs> What's with the track suit? I don't know. That's a thing. That's P- very TV. racist of you to say it's that. TV. Yeah, I watched uh, uh, that. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not. I watch TV, and the the track suits are all related to. The yeah, people of European, Eastern, Eastern, Eastern Europe. European descent. Yeah, they're all evil. That's, <laughs> all, that's all, like, any, you want to scare some Americans, and you're ever in, they're ever in Europe. Just wear a blue tracksuit with tennis shoes. We automatically assume that this is I'm about to get it's taken. A bad guy, it's a bad. Got to get guy. taken. You could just do, and then every other accent, as long as it's European, <laughs> Australian. This is Australian. I can't do Australia. Fosters. False just no way. See, I have to always go see the touch. You got to have a touchstone. So for Australian, it's always my crook could grab you, take you down, roll you over and over and over till you stop kicking, put you on the crag or rock, tenderize a bit. Good eating. That's what this whiskey do for you. 
Just yeah, you can just do it. You can just keep doing the same. Uh, how many? Uh, there's I don't know many Australian spirits. I mean, there's Fosters. Then what? They we've had this discussion on this podcast. Like the number one. I maker, don't remember yesterday. The number one makers of wine, like way up there in terms of wine. Okay, that was the Chilean broadcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, they do something else too. Do they make the yellowtail with the kangaroo on it? I don't know. I'm, I'm sh- assuming they 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 brand themselves as that. They probably ferment kangaroos and make an ah. Uh, that wouldn't that be something? Kangarunchi, kangarunchi, kanichi. There you go. Ruchi, ruchi. There you go. That's Fermented it. kangaroo tail, made from the pockets of mother kangaroo. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> Have you seen baby kangaroos when they're Young born? Young baby kangaroos. Have you seen baby kangaroos? Like veal. Have you seen baby kangaroos when they're born? No. Oh, yeah. They're very small. They're very small. Very small. Minuscule, some might. Cute say. little fella. I, Look at him. Right over there. Over there. Near that's, a, that's, his a, that's a Norm McDonald joke. He says that, uh, uh, that, that crocodile hunter died the other day, and we were all shocked. <laughs> well, really? Don't you expect that? <laughs> I can't remember the bit, but it's basically how obvious it should be that the crocodile dutter is eventually going to get killed. Like, <laughs> I wow. think does all these dangerous he's things a, with these a, dangerous animals. Sure, he's a good guy, but uh, <laughs> he's out there hunting crocodiles and being like, "Hey, I don't know." He's just it'd be different if you're like your 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 cousin died. You know, you've got a crocodile hunter as opposed to like you know. What does he do? He works at Walgreens. <laughs> koala hugger. Oh. Why why is it, why couldn't he have been the koala hugger? He get chlamydia and die from that. See, you can't they carry way. chlamydia. Poor koalas. Koala media. You've already made those jokes so many times they beat into the ground. Nobody remembers. I remember. Pepper's Farm remembers. <laughs> no, nobody remembers. And all these people. Well, good thing is Max has started listening to us again, so now <laughs> he gets caught up on the last hundred episodes that he's missed. Well, talk about Rex. Hard merge. And now a hard merge into board games. Uh, Rex is a remake of the old Dune game, which is then, when they lost the license, Fantasy Flight made Rex, which is basically Dune skinned with the Twilight Imperium universe. And now, here recently, they re-brought back and got the license for Rex, or for Dune. Re- you can buy Dune now, but apparently it's not well-liked. People like the old Dune. Some people prefer Rex. I prefer Rex. Really? Yes. Rex is simply uh, six factions that all have a power that breaks one of the six stages of the game. And the stages of the game are very simple. There are cards that are used for battle. Those get bid upon. But ha-ha, they're played face down. And so nobody knows what they're buying, except one guy at the table can look at them and know and tell people or not. And then you have where you deploy, deploy troops. And some people, you have to pay money to or influence. There's no money. It's all influence. But one person doesn't, and they can deploy a bunch of troops. There's some people who get money that instead of it going to the bank, it goes to them. Some people can do these weird actions of of keeping their troops hidden and, and turtling and not taking damage. And it's just, instead of a sandworm, there's a bombardment of, of, of ships in the uh, upper atmosphere that just fly around blowing stuff up. It's very mean. It's very streamlined. And it does exactly what the old Dune does, except it does it quicker. And by quicker, I mean three hours. And so it's a very six player mean game and Scythe stole the combat mechanism from it. So if you like Scythe and you just want violence, if you want a, a Scythe type game with violence and power, uh, there you go. Wake up and choose violence. And, but Rex is way out of print. Rex was not three hours in this game. We played this game for five hours and still weren't done because well, you had to go play poker at seven o'clock. But Bruno was saying he has the original Dune, and it was the exact same. Why would it be quicker? What What is quicker about Rex over old school Dune? And is the new Dune a reskin of the Rex, if a Rex streamlined the old Dune? Ask that question again. You're saying Rex was a faster version of the original Dune. So they clearly streamlined something. Mm-hmm. So is the new Dune... Just a reskin of Rex with I, I stuff. I don't think so. No, from what I've seen of it, it was it got it got a lot of hate. Huh. I don't know why. I remember shut up. Well, I know it was Twilight Imperium. Of course, Rex is in the Twilight Imperium universe with the same 
artwork character type stuff. I don't really, I don't have my many skins in the game, as they say. Come to come Twilight Imperium. I don't hate the game. We've played it twice. It was fine. It's a lot. Definitely need the full amount of people for it to be exciting. Rex was fine. It's a good game. It's not, it's more than fine. Don't get me wrong. I shouldn't have said that. Rex is a good game. <sighs> I don't know. We had talked about during our game of this, the Alliance thing that triggers alliances between the players came out seemingly pretty early for us. Uh -huh. And so that occurred very quickly and we all allied very quickly. So it was two versus two versus two. And from there, it just felt like a, it was fun, but it was just a tug of war back and forth. Right. We owned me and Bruno were close to winning one place away. Then y'all both, had, the other two teams attacked us. Uh -huh. So then another team was close. So then we attacked them. Then you were close. So we attack you. And it just seems like a tug of war. That seems very difficult to win. Yeah, I I will say that I've cooled on my I've cooled on Rex, not because I think it's a bad game. I think it's an old game. There, yes, I think it. I think it falls into the thing of, and you see games do this, such as, and I think of one of my my favorites, which is a uh, um, uh, Game of Thrones. It lays into the thematic side of it, and going for this feel. And it goes, it doesn't care what, how long this takes or what you have to go through. We're going to keep the theme and we're going to keep this aspect of the game pure and y'all just figure it out. And so what that lends itself to is that sometimes you have very long drawn out back and forth games. And then sometimes you have amazing games. And so I've had some amazing games of Rex and I've had some very stalemate games of Rex. And this one, we played it with Michael Parsons was my partner in this particular game. And we were, on the verge of winning and then we weren't on the verge of not, and we were getting close. Uh, but then at the same time, it's, it, it is very back and forth. I, I think I don't prefer it over longer games. If I was giving another example of like, all right, you can either play this or play game of Thrones. Obviously I'm going to play game of Thrones. Game I think of Thrones, I think, by far I think I would, me. I think I would play twilight Imperium again over this rather than Rex. Me too. I think the game would move a lot faster if you, all the players absolutely knew what was going on and were bought into it. But still, I think that by the time you put the effort into it, this game's really showed its age. Well, and it's a weird thing, too, because while you don't want something where you have a runaway leader in this game, it's got the team up thing where y'all uh, clearly because you were literally talking to the other team of uh, Enrique and Bubba. You're like. They're one spot away from winning. We clearly have to team up and attack them, defeating them in these areas, taking that away from them. Right. So we immediately lost. So then we were all kind of even, and then it, it was just a tug of war. So it's like, I'm trying to think of games that do that better. Well, first off, that's the same problem I had with Root. Root was the same aspect of everybody trying to run up and, and get close. And then people like, oh, the, we got to beat this guy down to keep him from winning. Uh, Game of Thrones does this thing where everybody gets to the very last where you just need one or two castles and then it every the, the game kind of changes because nobody wants to help you win. Cosmic Encounter does the same thing. Everybody kind of help you, you get so many planets and then it's like, okay, nobody wants to help you now because you're about to win. So there's tons of games that do that, but they often offer a thing that goes, here's this thing that you can do on your own that will win you the game. In Rex... The thing that motivates people is one. My character is essentially if I the game not like your character at the end of the game. If I'm holding these two spots and the game ends, I win. So my win conditions was I if this thing if it, if I can't outright win the game, I can drag it along and then at the very last win it. Oh, I didn't realize you had to hold a, two specific spots. There are two specific spots. One I held the entire game, and the other one was right south of it. So it's particularly easy for me to do it. So it was a thing of if if I saw it's eight rounds and this is round six, I'd already decide, okay, by round six, if I ain't won it, I'm going down here and I'm holding this. I'm just turtling and you're not going to get me so that I can win that way. And so there's some things like that, but it, that also kind of, that, that's theme over mechanics there. But either way, Rex, Rex is old, but it, 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 it still plays like an old game. I wouldn't play it with less than six people. There's... A I guess it's all the pros and cons of each. I really like. No, I don't. I don't like deterministic battle. 
and I know that goes against probably what most people prefer. I like part of it being deterministic, but then like a die roll can help too. No, we've, you, you, you said this the other day and it almost sent me into a I rage. know, I know, because you're anti against that. And I know the superior player should win. But even in history, there's been these little factions that did something weird and stupid. And for whatever reason, they ended up winning. And it's like, maybe I roll that perfect 20 roll and defeat you. But that's not that. But, but I just, that to me gives me an excitement as opposed to, and even in Scythe, we do this. I know there's no way possible I can win in this battle. So I don't even try. So it's like, I just, I lay out all zeros to prevent me from losing in in this game, you have to commit so many units. No, you don't lay out all zeros because if you lose, you lose them all. Right. Okay. Whatever. But in this game, if you're going to like, you will know generally, not all the time, generally, especially if you're Bubba's character who could see, he could request seeing something from the opposing battlers. He had three different things he could check and he would generally know, okay, I'm going to lose. And in Scythe, in Scythe, I think it happens actually more than in Rex. We had a few good battles in Rex. I don't know. I like a die roll. I like a die roll. I absolutely hate a die roll. I like a die roll. It's, I, I don't think that you... And just like an X-Wing. Roll that die. No, no. It has nothing... No, no. You're, you're, you're confusing the... You're, you're confusing the die roll and the excitement of a die roll with, with the deterministic value of, of planning and doing your thing. Like you're thinking the die roll is exciting. I'm not, I don't get me wrong. I have nothing wrong against rolling the dice, but you're thinking when you say die roll, people hear random. Well, yeah, I don't know. There's something bad. I like Well, rolling a dice and that being random are two separate things. I mean, you have mitigating things you can add to the die roll, no. but the, uh, you, and you posted this in our Facebook group. Cause you're looking for, battling mechanics right and what people prefer and people posted several different ways uh, and there, there i didn't know there were so many ways somebody posted a cry havoc poor uh well, i forget his name the cry havoc has at least an interesting no no we hated it, it was, you don't remember because that you commit this to this yes on the this board, board. The board yeah and like it was so anticlimactic. Yes, but it, I for me a battle should be exciting. And if a battle is not exciting in a board game, you've you've messed up somewhere. Well, I I get your point, but you, you I think you often hold that that the battling the die is what's in fun. Well, okay, it doesn't have to be die. I, I'm even like Kemet, as it? much as I hate to say it, even cosmic encounter. We're like, okay, you have a stack of cards. We do this thing. Okay, you've lost. Well, boom, I've played this card that you didn't, you know, sneak attack. You didn't see this coming. Well, I did see that coming. And now I have this reverse action. I don't know. I just, I, I want some excitement in my battles. In deterministic battles, such as Cry Havoc, that Cry Havoc one was garbage. Tom loved that. I remember watching those when I was really into uh, watching the Dice Tower and Tom's opinion on stuff. And he loved the battle mechanic in Cry Havoc. And we played that game and we both hated that I remember mechanic. a long time ago not liking it. I'd like to play it again because I remember it being the some get captured, some you put them on the board, that type thing. There, there was a different... Uh, it's one I need to see again. And another version of battle mechanics i hate is imperial 2030 it's just simply mine versus yours i have five you have three now i've got two left yeah oh that's simplistic it's just a wall it is very simplistic yeah. but it's not exciting well it, i guess it depends on what type of game you're making are you are you going for a exciting type of game or are you going for a excel spreadsheet type of game well i think there you can have both it's just that you're, you're equating that throwing of the dice to be the excitement. Well, okay. So the reason I say that is because of Star Wars Rebellion. It, and I rolled a die. Yes, but that was not random. I know I had things on my cards. I know. That was not random. You did not randomly roll a dice and this worked out. But I needed something specific to happen right, with the die. But you put yourself in that position. Okay. That's my point. Is that when you say die, just roll a dice? No, that's not what you mean. No, it's not like I roll a six, you roll a five, I win. Uh, yeah, because you play risk. 
Right. I played. I've played more games of Risk than I'd like to recount. But that's what you say when you say just roll a dice. That is not exciting. It is not exciting when you play Risk. Risk has been a big hit for a long time. No, the Risk is not exciting when you roll up against somebody with one dude, and you've got twenty. And he keeps he rolling a six. Out. He keeps rolling a six. He keeps, it's very frustrating. Yes, I get that. Yeah. So that die mechanism only comes into play when you have set up everything else and you need a little bit of uncertainty, which was like rebellion or anything else. But I would, I would say that that even, even that can be simulated in other ways. So, and and the other thing I don't like about these rec style games is, the, I don't know, it, it does. Okay. The other thing I don't like is, okay, so me and you can ally with people, as we mentioned earlier. Uh My win is basically if my allied team had won, and Uh you can ally with one or two other people. Yeah. The more you ally with, the more area you have to control, making it more difficult. Obviously, that makes sense. But we are all two, two, and two. Uh I was allied with Bruno. My win condition for me was if me and Bruno had won and when you battle, you lose your ships, they go to this area for what do they call that? Yes, this is casualties. You okay, whatever. The casualty place, but you can recruit them back. Right. If I had less people in that spot than he did. So in other words, yeah. if I had less dead people in there than he did, yeah. I win. Yeah. You had your own win. I I don't I don't like that. I like I don't like this, ha ha, I beat you type thing that Bruno had no idea I had this card in my hand. Well, I had no idea what Bruno had in his hand. I like knowing Jerry needs this to beat me. I need this to beat him. We all know what we got. And then you deal out these cards and it's, oh, no, secretly, I beat Jerry. But he has this card that if blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I just, I don't. Rex is fun. I don't think it's sound mechanically. Well, it's yeah, it's it's a thematic game. It's an Ameritrash fighting game. It's your typical Ameritrash fighting game. Do you think in your recent months slash yeah months, do you think you lean more, as you say, Ameritrash or Euro- European? I've always leaned to the the Euros. Me as well. But but there are some great Ameritrash games out there that I think are are phenomenal. That I, you just will not get that feeling from. But like for me, like playing Demarker, it blew for me. Demarker blew Rex out of the water. Right, Rex is super. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. But I liked what I was doing in Demarker way more than what I was doing in this game, and they don't compare in the least. But I always just compare. What did I enjoy? Did mm-hmm. I enjoy this or did I enjoy that? I enjoyed this, so I I enjoy the Euro, even though it's like this market type thing. I just, the Rex, I just, A, I don't like negotiation. No, I'm anti negotiation. not any negotiation in it. There's a little bit of negotiation. Very little. And uh, I don't know. I just, I prefer, I prefer Euros. Even though you get more excitement out of an American Ameritrash game. Right. <sighs> I think, I think that Rex is an old game. But if you have any battle mechanics that you can think of that you enjoy, send us an email at boardgamestops at gmail.com. Because that was something that had been on my mind, working on and thinking of these various fighting mechanics. It blew up a little bit in our Facebook page because, you know, it's interesting seeing the different ways people enjoy having that interaction with others. But, uh, yeah, send us an email. We need emails. Also, if you enjoy what you hear, rate and review us on Apple. Apple. Or Spotify. Or whatever platform you listen on. Rate and review us. But also send us emails because those are what we read on the air. Because, you know, a Discord, Facebook, all that stuff, that's great. They get lost in the shuffle of all the other Facebook and Discords that get posted. But an email, we can flag it. We read it just like we did last uh, episode or whenever that was. We read the several. Uh, Send us emails. And they give us also good topics of conversation. If you have something interesting to say. Nah, you can just say, hey, what's up, guys? And we will read it. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. As Jerry's putting his keys in his pocket, ready to go out the door. He's got to get out of here. He always says that. Got to get out of here. I got places to be. He's got places to be, as do I, unfortunately. So we got to wrap this up. I'm checking my watch, not for my heart rate, but for the time. That's going to do it. 
uh, Rex, it's okay. It's not great. White Castle sucks. Maybe we should play it again. We'll see what happens. And until the next episode, when we will hopefully get Enrique and or Bubba and discuss Den of Wolves and John Company, I'm Gabby. That's Jerry. Bye-bye. Thank you for tolerating this episode of the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Thank you.